you really just have to remember these three things when using manual mode. Hi, this is RP Gutierrez, your nomadic filmmaker. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to use your camera's manual exposure settings so you can finally stop using auto mode. And I'm going to try to make it as easy as possible for beginners to learn and understand. For this demo, I'm going to be using the Sony ZV-E10. You may be using a different camera model or a different camera brand. That's okay. The buttons would be different, but the concepts are going to be the same. Let's look at the word photograph. So let's divide it into photo and graph. So photo means light and graph means to draw. So a photograph essentially is just drawing with light. So that's how your camera creates an image by capturing light and saving it onto your camera sensor and then to your memory card. So when you're using auto mode, your camera is basically trying to balance automatically or algorithmically the different exposure settings. So exposure is how much light there is in your image. So there are three elements to exposure. ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. And we call that the exposure triangle. So basically, you really just have to remember these three things when using manual mode. So let's start with the easiest, ISO. So ISO is just the sensitivity of the film or your camera sensor. So the higher ISO you use, the brighter the image becomes. The lower ISO you use, the darker the image becomes. So for many modern digital cameras, the base ISO that you could use is 100. So using the base ISO will give you the crispest, cleanest image. So if you notice in this sample, the higher the ISO goes, the noisier the image it becomes. So the farther you go away from that base ISO, the more noise you will get in your image. So why don't we just use ISO 100 all the time? Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it, if it were physically possible. But we don't always have enough light when taking photos or videos, particularly indoors. So you could try that and experiment with that. For the Sony ZV-E10, I think an ISO of up to 400 is clean. 800, 1000, 1600 are kind of acceptable, but you're already starting to see image noise. So that's the first one. So the second component of our exposure triangle is the shutter speed. So the shutter speed is basically how fast or how slow your camera shutter closes. So when a camera shutter is open, the film or sensor is exposed to light, so it's receiving light. So the longer you keep that open, the brighter your image will become because there's a lot of light going into the sensor or to the film. And proportionally, the faster your shutter speed closes, the shorter time there is for the sensor or the film to get exposed, so it's gonna be a darker image. So why don't we just keep our shutter speed open for a long time so we get a bright image. Technically, we can do that, but there is motion blur. The camera is getting so much light information into the sensor and the world is not stationary. People are moving, objects are moving. All of those movements are captured by the camera. So you get a lot of blurry details in your photo. For as long as the objects you're taking an image of stays still, you can get a clean, crisp image with a slow shutter speed. But for anything that moves, it will come out blurry. So that's the second one, shutter speed. And then the third and final component of our exposure triangle is the aperture. So aperture simply means opening. Opening of what? Opening of the lens. So the wider the aperture, the more light gets into the camera's sensor or film, and the brighter the image. But the narrower the aperture, the less light is able to go into the sensor or the film, thereby resulting in a darker image. So for aperture, it's measured by the f-stop or the f-number. So the lower the f-number, the wider the aperture is. The higher the f-number, the narrower the aperture is. So if you have a narrower aperture, the depth of field is larger, so everything in the image looks clearer. But if you have a shallower depth of field, the focus area becomes a smaller part of the frame. So it could give you a blurry foreground or a blurry background. So depth of field is how much of the field of view is captured by the camera clearly. And I know for a lot of YouTubers now, they like that nice blurry background. So if you want to get that blurry background, you could go ahead and um, make your aperture wider. So I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And yeah, I just like sharing what I learned with you guys. Let me know what you think about these things in the comments and I'll see you again in another video. Bye.